Hi, I'm here in our Plymouth training facility and the purpose of this video is to discuss how to properly clean your Sentinel intruder detection sonar head. Now the sonar itself is designed to live underwater for long periods of time and survive in that environment. However, the things that live in the sea also decide to take up residence on the sonar and excessive marine growth can degrade the performance of the system. So therefore it's important to know how to clean it effectively and do it as often as it's required. Now, this one itself is clearly too clean to do this demonstration on, so here's one we prepared earlier. So this sonar head has been deployed here in Plymouth in the UK for about two months, and as you can see, it does have now a significant amount of marine growth collected upon it. This transducer face here is where the business happens, and this marine growth that collects on the face of it will degrade the performance. It's like putting a muffle on a speaker or a microphone. So, to clean it, first thing to do, give it a low pressure hose over the top, wash off the worst of it, and then you take a plastic scraper tool like this sonar cleaning tool that we can provide. We only use plastic tools on the face of this. Behind here are highly sensitive ceramic transducers, so no metal tools to be used. So we take this plastic tool and we use it. We can apply a fair amount of pressure, but not too much, in order to remove the worst of this marine growth. It's a good practice to clean the, the marine growth off the side of the unit so we can inspect it for any corrosion or cracks or any wear and tear that we might be concerned about. Again, the scraper is a perfect tool to use. Okay, so using the scraper, we've got rid of the worst of the debris off of the uh, sonar head, and now it's beginning to look more like a sentinel system. Um, we've given it a fresh water wash and able to inspect the body and make sure there's no damage or corrosion. And now let's focus on the, on the sonar face itself. You can still see here after scraping there's still some debris left behind and this is barnacles and the tougher crustaceans. So to remove these we take a piece of wet and dry sandpaper like this, 240 grade, and using light pressure only give those barnacles a sanding down. So having sanded off the worst of the barnacles, we're now in a position where we can inspect the transducer face for any damage. We're looking for pitting, cracking, or dents. Anything deeper than a millimeter, then contact Sonodyne Support to have them repair the transducer face because it may be damaged. Otherwise, time to give it a last wipe off to make sure there's no residue of any oils or greases, and for that we use an alcohol wipe. Okay, so inspection complete. Anodes replaced as necessary, cable reattached, it's time to redeploy this back in the water. And the very last thing to do is to give the face a wipe over with some soapy water to stop any bubbles clinging to the surface. All we need for that, a bit of household detergent. Now you can either put that in a spray bottle and spray it on as you need to, or I use my trusty Sonodyne mug and a soapy sponge and just give it a wipe over. So that completes that instructional video. If you have any more questions, then please get in touch.